well, you know, the open economy is really doing well right now. And, and technology is one of the places that is open and facilitates even what we're doing right now. I mean, we're talking about a Microsoft product right now. We're using an Apple product as an IFB. The technology companies are enabling us to work from anywhere. And, and, that's, and they're maintaining their dominant position because they're open and still earning revenue. So they're a more defensive sector than some of these other places that are traditional uh, defensive sectors like energy sure. or something that's more directly impacted by the economy. So I believe that tech is, you know, a lot of people say it's tired. I believe tech actually, actually has a lot more legs simply because, you know, you have the ability for continued earnings strength all the way through this problem. The only thing, though, I sit here and I hear a lot of people who are bullish on tech, Jamie, and I look at the size of the sector in the S&P 500 and it's at historic highs. You know, at one point energy was this large and now it's dwindled to almost nothing. So, you know, it's not so much that I don't take your fundamental case for tech. It's that is it all baked in and how much bigger can these companies get relative to the rest of the economy? Well, I mean, people, when they say tech, they hear Microsoft, they hear Google, they hear Facebook, you know, the big names. If you go below the surface and look at Broadcom or something like that, I mean, even even chips are doing very well. So I think if you think about what's going to happen as the economy starts to you know open back up, you're going to start to see production of these things, Microsoft producing its Surface tablets, for example. That type of activity is probably going to happen quicker because it's going to come from Asia. So I believe that there's more strength underneath the, the biggest big cap, cap tech companies. That's why I think it's more, even dividend plays for Broadcom, for example, is a big deal. Sure. So I think that uh, it's more likely that the dividend plays that people may be searching for can be more stable and found in that area. So implied in that, I guess, is that with the big companies reporting this week, you would be looking slightly elsewhere. Like you said, Broadcom, maybe some of the chips, uh, something for us to, to kind of keep in mind as we as we move through the biggest of the big reporting. Simeon, let me turn to you because your emphasis is a little bit different here. It's more on the retail part of the economy. Uh, tell me about clicks. This is a long, short ETF, long online retail, short brick and mortar. Seems like a genius play right now, but what happens when the economy starts to reopen? Yeah, I, I, I hate, almost hate it when people say, what a genius play right now, to your point. <laughs> uh, we actually launched Clicks, which is 100 cents long online retailers and 50 cents brick and mortar, short brick and mortar retailers. We launched it about two and a half years ago. Now, of course, in a drawdown, long short's a great friend of yours. But in fact, the long and the short leg of Clicks have actually made money in this downturn because the online side, we're all stuck at home up 5%, and the short leg has lost a ton of money because everything's closed. But this trend is much longer than that. You know, and it's we're earlier in the game than I think people understood. We were only somewhere around 12 to 15% of retail being online going into this shutdown. And that means there's long legs to the continued pain on the brick and mortar side and more upside for the online retailers. It may be accelerated for sure. You know, as an example, take a, a category like groceries. That was probably the lowest penetration of any piece of retail online. And now almost everyone's getting groceries delivered and those habits may persist for a while. So I think absolutely there was a catalyst here in the shutdown period, but it was a trend that was long, that was going on long before and will continue long after. So you promise uh, someone who buys this ETF will never lose any money? <laughs> Can't promise anything in this business, that's that's for sure. But I will tell you that the way we structured the ETF is important. So that long leg, the online piece, is market cap weighted. Okay. So yes, Amazon was a big contributor to the upside of late. By the way, so was Chewy, so was Wayfair. But on the short leg, on the brick and mortar side, it's actually an equally weighted index. And that's really important. We did that originally because, hey, Somebody's going to pull a quote unquote omni channel rabbit out of the hat and do okay. But if you're equally weighted, there's so much pain across the other names of the constituents. Yeah. Particularly in this pandemic period, the fact that a couple of staples did okay didn't stop the, the short leg from being down 27% and contributing substantially to the positive return. So, structuring these ideas. Even when the idea is right, the structure is really important as well. You've made your case, sir, uh, and, and made it pretty well. Uh, Simeon Hyman, thank you for joining me. And Jamie Cox as well, some thoughts to keep in mind as we.